Hey there, Bob Ferriga's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show. Mm. To you, my YouTube buddies, what's going on? Let me know in the comments. We'll talk about it after the show right now. Let's just get into the show. Bloom Chaos is what we're talking about today. Uh, Bloom Chaos is the one product in the line, the one nutrient in the line that really can make a difference. Obviously, Herculean Harvest is the, the basis of it, and the others, you know, uh, Gaia, Medusa, these sorts of things, uh, are the, the meat and bones of it. But Bloom Chaos is how you can really, really set yourself apart. And Scott uh, was asked a question about Bloom Chaos and just kind of went into some fairly good detail over a little bit of time there about using Bloom Chaos and how you can really make a difference in your garden with it. I think it's valuable stuff. And I'd like you to watch the clip and I'll talk to you after. Uh, is BK as effective as a drench during mid to late flower as it is as a foliar pre on pre-bud sites? Could it be used as a drench only, or is there more benefit as foliar and continue as drench? Now, let me ask you this. So when you're starting off at the start, are you, you personally, are you only foliar with BK until you see bud sites where you can no longer foliar, or are you doing <clears throat> both? Or are you doing circumstantially doing something? Circumstantial. What is the circumstance? <clears throat> well, I mean, I think the cheat sheet is foliar and veg creates branching and shrubs, makes shorter internodal spacing, and creates a wider More canopy. It just wants to do this and stack. Broccoli instead of cauliflower, or vice versa, I guess you'd say. Like, it gets thicker and more yeah, than more, more cauliflower than More broccoli. cauliflower than broccoli, yeah. yeah. Or it's like broccoli versus broccolini. Okay, that's a better example. Yeah. Okay, Same okay. plant, different things. Yeah. But now if I'm watering it in, I'm promoting elongation in veg and more lateral growth towards the lighting versus trying to keep them more stout with tighter internodal spacing. Foliar feeding, internodal spacing becomes tighter, better canopy in veg. If I have room, would I want to stretch so I can get more light on those plants? No, because if you're in a seven foot ceiling, the stretch in veg screws you because by the time you go into uh, bloom, you got another stretch uh, and you have seven feet on the so light. So why would I want stretch? Like in here, like pig. He to wants get stretch to those lights. Because he's 10 foot, or he's got 12 foot ceilings. Uh -huh. So he foliar feeds, foliar <laughs> feeds, and then about two weeks before going into bloom, he starts watering it in because he wants the legs to start. Okay. Then in bloom, was that the other part? So Well, I guess he's saying, you know, it, well, I guess what he was getting at is that, that you know, why wouldn't I just full or why wouldn't I just uh, root drench all the way through? And then I was the right. one that, that, that brought right. it up the, the thing. Well, because root drenching, if you have all the room in the world, I mean, you can. there's no wrong way to do it. The downfall okay. is that if, wherever you put it is encouraging that energy to kind of focus on that action. So if I okay. water it into the roots with all my nutrition, I'm promoting the plant to grow up and growth. Okay. I'm looking for lateral growth. I want you to stretch for the sky because I'm giving you all the energy in the root zone. You're taking okay. all that and shoving it up to the top. If I'm foliar feeding, it's being delivered to the top so they don't need to bring it up there. They don't need to grow towards the light. They're sitting down and they're accepting that and they're just dividing out and making new cells immediately, which then stacks internodal space and you get more leaf branching, you get more foliage on the top. Why wouldn't I do both? Well, because now you're at like 14 tablespoons of Herculean in week four of veg and oh. you know, the crust going, and you don't need to. There's just no need. Okay. You can go back and forth. You can go uh -huh. one day foliar feed, one day soil drench. Okay. You'll get the thing, but the other thing is now you've created a beast of an eater because now you're giving okay. it, you want to grow and multiply internodal spaces? Well, you're asking, that's a tall order. You better give me all the food I need to do this. Uh -huh. And people that over apply chaos will all come back, well, I'm burning my plants or I ran out of calcium. It's like, you ran out of everything. This yeah. isn't just uh -huh. a calcium deficiency. They've run out of amino acids. They've run out of protein. They've run out of nitrogen, potassium. It's gone. Because you're literally making the plant triple time work. Okay. So I usually will do, you know, if I'm going to do both, I don't do more than seven applications a week, period, because it'll stress the plant out beyond repair. And you, ostensibly, have as much herc as you want and still don't do it because it doesn't make a lot of goddamn uh, sense. It's, yeah, there's a definite loss of return on your investment okay. at some point. And, and every genetic's different, every environment's yeah. different, every garden, know. but you can get to a point where you're just throwing the herc away because they're not eating it anyway. You're creating the crust on the top uh -huh. and you've kind of hit the echelon of that plant. There's some plants 
we've yet to find the echelon. There's some plants that are like, oh, two tea suits? Yeah, it's too much. I don't want any more. Uh -huh. So it's that's the tricky part. Now, foliar feeding, because what do you say about the bloom? About Well, that's what I was going to ask. Is it in the bloom? I mean, why am I doing blue cast at all? Well, because it's the same thing. You're trying to get the flowers to form. You're trying to get them to become and solid and swell up. And I can't give it up. to them. You want them I, to go in. And I can't foliar feed it. I want to. Yeah, because, you shouldn't, but. But it, it's, trying to, it's trying to reach for the stars and veg. It's trying to squat and produce yep. in bloom. Well, because, so in bloom, you got the first 14 days, and the plant's transitioning from a longer day cycle to a shorter one, this color spectrum to this. And now they're changing up their dietary needs for what they need to develop fruit and flowers. So all these transitions are happening in the first two weeks of flower. And in that time, that plant has gone, well, since you're trying to figure this out and you're doing all this stuff in the root zone, I'm just going to do my last bit of stretch to this new light source that's redder and shorter. We're trying to figure out why it's shorter. So I'm going to try to survive by getting taller. Uh -huh. And after about two weeks, it's like, all right, time to... And how I call it, they're trying to become pretty to multiply. Mm -hmm. So there's now it's time to make my flowers so that something wants to come and pollinate me and create seed so I can reproduce and be here again in the next cycle. Sure. So after two weeks and it got up nice and tall, it's standing there, and now it's like, well, let's put on fruit. And then uh -huh. it stops growing this way. At that point, when you start adding the cast into the root zone, that flower is calling for the nutrition, or the plant is, yeah. and saying, we need to stack this up in this fruit. So by adding the chaos in with your Herc and your Afro and your <laughs> Persephone and all these products, it's allowing all of that material up into the plant to make the flowers bigger, stronger, and healthier. And that was his question, is, is it as effective in mid to late flower as a drench? It's mostly effective, because at a foliar feed, you're just, it's, you're just adding is, moisture to flowers, which we don't recommend ever, so... Once I see fruit... No, I mean, it is, it, I guess as a root drench, it is more effective in bloom than it is in, depending, in veg. Because I got guys who won't use it in flower at all because they are afraid of it. Sure. Because they're... Soft. Tired. Something. Had enough. People. <laughs> and uh, so they only do it in veg because they're going for, I've got five weeks to veg. And so what they do, sure. they never foliar feed it. They just... Put in the root zone, put in the root zone so they can get their plants to X height to then yeah. toss them into flower for their cycle. So okay. it's literally one of the most unique products. It's one of those where, unfortunately, Frank goes to his grave with it and it never gets to the mainstream of what it should yeah. be because it's just never, it's just it's never going to get there. But it is. until then, it's a hell of a tool to make things pretty magical and I... I still like to challenge every. I can't tell you how many people like, oh, they made a bloom cast. I'm like, okay, here, let's go one to one with that and see how that. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, nobody has what Frank has created with this thing. Okay, what do you think? That informative, entertaining, helpful, agree, disagree? What do you think about bloom chaos? Do you use it? Do you have opinions about it? Do you have questions about it? Let's talk about it. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. The OCG Fam Show. It's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the O. CG Fam Show. See you tomorrow.